So hi everybody, my name is Annabelle Dupreis and I work with Tom Tanner um, on the um, uh, MSC um, SEDEP uh, programmes. So um, Tom is Director of the Climate Change Programme and I'm Director of the Sustainable Development Programme. So welcome to our open day. Now I'm actually trying to... Okay. So um, for this webinar, we're just going to talk very briefly about the programmes that we offer and we're going to give uh, uh, some time for Q&A. So within that, we'll talk about the programmes and give you an idea of the structure and setup and assessments and the type of learning environment that you'll be, you'll be a part of at SEDA. Oh, I notice you're back. Do you want to take oh, yeah. it? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so um, SEDA's um, is a research centre and teaching centre which set within the Department of Development Studies in SOAS. So we have a mix of uh, research staff and teaching staff and a set of associates, including tutors and researchers uh, associates as well. We're quite a happy bunch. Um, and we have good links with, obviously, with other departments because we recognise that climate change, sustainable development, uh, there's a lot of other people working within SOAS on those issues, particularly strong within development studies in our um, environment, political economy, natural resources cluster there and within the Centre for Sustainable Finance, which is hosted in the Department of Economics, but has uh, associates from all over SOAS as well. So we have uh, strong links with those guys. Next slide, please. So it's very hard to say when people say, um, I, I work at so-and-so, is that okay? Is that normal for a student? It, it's a real diversity. We do have, um, I think a profile that's changing somewhat. It was more people working within the development, the kind of aid and development agency type sectors. It's really moving uh, as climate change is mainstreaming itself into everybody's business. And we're seeing in particular a lot more of finance um, sectors and um, mainstream companies who recognize that, you know, ESG, uh, environment sustainability, governance, um, social criteria is really kind of becoming central to what they do. And they want to be able to take climate change uh, rather, rather seriously because they realize it affects both their bottom line and potential future market opportunities. So we have a real mix, um, including um, some people wor working within the um, international development sector and within ministries, um, both home and overseas as diplom in diplomatic corps as well, as well as in our development banks and uh, classic N development NGO types. So you get to meet and interact with a wide variety of other students from all around the world. It's one of the advantages of it being uh, an online distance learning course is that people are situated everywhere. It makes it difficult in some ways, but it makes it really uh, vibrant and brings a lot of energy in others. The research we do is set around those challenges of sustainability and development. And here's just three examples of, of areas that we're currently working on. Uh, some work around knowledge and food systems, which Annabelle leads on, uh, particularly trying to develop a, a cadre who understand the, the knowledge systems, curricula, and the research networks around food systems to link them up more effectively. We do quite a lot of work in um, energy transitions and access to energy from a social justice perspective. So uh, our colleague um, Giuseppe Siciliano in particular has looked at large scale hydropower. Another colleague, uh, John Phillips, who looked at more um, local scale at the justice issues around uh, energy in uh, South Africa. And my own work, one of my areas of work is around urban sustainability and urban resilience. And looking particularly around um, where approaches are um, heading, um, where they've been working well, where they need to draw on new and emerging uh, technology and approaches in particular, and an awareness to the politics of those processes and um, the justice criteria and concerns as well. Oh, examples of some of the things we've been working on. Yeah. So, presumably, um, those who are watching are interested in climate change, sustainability and development issues. And that so as we firstly recognize there are global structural injustices 
that are presented by climate change, a lot of those map onto what we already know about environmental injustice um, and its relationship with development. And we also recognize that, that there, is a, there is a problem at the minute where, where that there is a very incremental approach to moving ourselves out of the climate crisis and we need more radical agendas. And to do so, we can bring in diverse knowledges that can inform policy. So we're looking for different ways of thinking, different ways of understanding problems um, to try and help inform socially just, but also uh, rapid and effective transitions from uh, towards the low carbon uh, economy and ways that can help people adapt to climate change and deal with disaster risk uh, in a fairer way and a more effective way. We're also really keen um, around that the, the, we understand the, the growing job market for climate and sustainability with regards to development. And as you saw, we, you know, we have a wide variety of um, students and that alumni network really helps. I think firstly from with our work online, using discussion fora to actually exchange between students and moderating discussions, we, you know, it's, it, it's all really up to date because it's people's lived experience of their work and their experiences, both in the countries they're working in, the countries they've um, worked in previously or wh where they're from, that brings a real vibrancy and dynamism to our courses. We at SEDEP have actually been working for over two decades, I say almost three decades, um, on distance learning back in the day at um, a different part of the University of London, but we have the core staff who you can see online, but we have also a network of external associate tutors who work with us and um, specialists that we bring in for dissertation supervision where we don't have that knowledge in-house. So we have uh, some research expertise where we don't necessarily have it. Um, we, can, we can call on our, our colleagues and also our external contacts. We have a commitment in SOAS, um, across SOAS, to decolonizing the curriculum. So we're looking for ways, not just of bringing in um, academic perspectives from the global south, but also um, recognizing that the way we interpret those perspectives is actually constrained and influenced by how we are own, how we've been conditioned in our learning as well. So we're looking to really. Um, test ourselves and our students in the ways of understanding knowledge, um, as well as bringing in a diverse set of different knowledges to, to, to bear on the problem and the solutions. Um, set up as a, as a unit is a cost efficient way of uh, doing a master's degree. It enables people to study whilst working or whilst um, doing household uh, duties, or, or just in a more relaxed manner because it is part-time. Our network of students, it says 250 there, we've actually, um, our active students are more like 400 now, um, and we have a really wide network of uh, alumni as well. Our LinkedIn page is pretty, is pretty heavy. Um, and that professional networking is something that we really encourage and people get a lot from meeting up with people in the same countries, from exchanging with people who are working on similar issues. Uh, and that again is, is one of our uh, USPs that we bring. The SOAS library is second to none in its, in its um, resources with regard to international development, Global South, and um, the online library is, is really extensive. And for those who can get to the library, it's quite an experience to visit because it's a beautiful piece of um, brutalist architecture. So. That's uh, something we're seeing. Um, we also provide careers service. So we have careers advice split between University of London's provision and the SOAS provision. And there's a wide variety of events that are organized both in our department, um, which are more focused on development studies, environment, sustainability, and then those that are more, uh, more generic across the SOAS University and the University of London. Annabelle, do you want to take over? 
Okay, so yeah, I'll take over from here. Thanks a lot, Tom. Um, so the, the learning approach that you'll get at SEDAP is really based around the um, online learning environment, um, which you'll see a little kind of uh, screenshot here at the bottom. So basically, you would go on to this environment um, online, wherever you, wherever you want to. Um, you can use it on your mobile or on, uh, on, on your PC or laptop. And um, you will access then your, um, your, the module that you're doing. If you're, if you're first starting, you'll start with your core module. Um, so both programs have um, core modules. And then from there, you will carry on with your electives. So each module, you will get core teaching materials, which basically summarize concepts, debates, methods, policies, and generally the, the kind of introduction to that particular topic. Each week has a different topic and each week has different reading. So there will be a core key reading list and additional reading lists for further interest. And a lot of students find that they may not actually get to all the further readings each week, but when they start doing their dissertation, they will find that those further readings are an incredible uh, resource for them. And so when you start to refine exactly what you want to really focus on for your dissertation, then you've got a lot of material and uh, resources available to you. Um, our modules also have exercises, self-assessment exercises and learning exercises to help you um, sort of uh, work out how you've digested the information, um, let you give, give you a little bit of time to reflect on your learning um, and kind of keep you going each week so that you're not just completely just reading, reading, reading all the time, um, and help gives you an opportunity to kind of you know put down thoughts um, and this is also another way um, another kind of avenue for this is the discussion forums which we have online um, so each week your tutor would pose a question or a, a sort of concept to think about which is based on the readings um, that you've done that week and uh, sort of uh, put it out to everybody and um, you'll be able to discuss with your uh, fellow students that that area of, of interest um, and that happens every week it's part of the assessments as well so you're encouraged to do that because it gives you percentages towards your final um, your final grade um, our other forms of assessments are uh, both formative and summative so formative in that um, this allows you to sort of write uh, write a response to a question that you're set and your tutor will then um, give you feedback and that feedback can then feed into the larger piece of work which which will come at the end of your uh, module um, at the end of the session so that formative feedback is is really important and that actually also occurs within the online discussion forums as well because your tutor monitors and um, feeds back um, you know your ideas and it sort of pulls out areas that are, are really pertinent and, and that all helps you kind of develop and grow within, within your learning. Um, so it's, it's a really useful, um, useful way of um, kind of assessment as well. So within that assessment, we also have a critical reflection and peer review. So, um, you know, reflecting and reflecting critically on your reading um, and also working with your um, student, with, with your colleagues on um, reviewing their work and having that interaction. And we also try and bring in a few different ways of writing as well, because that's really important. Um, we try to make sure that throughout your the kind of life cycle of your MSc, you will have the opportunity to, to write in, in a number of different ways, whether it's uh, traditional academic essays, or, or policy briefs and, and also blogs. So I think that gives you an opportunity, particularly with blogs, to be able to show that you can digest perhaps some you know, scientific or very, very detailed um, academic work um, and be able to kind of translate that into uh, a, a piece of writing that the general public would be able to understand. And we value that Kind of encouragement of those skills as well because they're really great when you when you're in the workplace as well um just moving on so to the program structure um on our um 
website, you'll see that there's um, a structure tab. And if you click on that, then you'll get to see all the different modules that are available. So um, for your MSc, um, you would need to do one core module, three elective modules in the dissertation. Um, the postgraduate diploma is one core module and three electives, so no dissertation. And the postgraduate certificate is one core module and one elective module. So you'll see here it's varying times that um, these uh, awards, these programmes can be taken. Um, we do have a, a minimum, uh, sorry, maximum registration of five years. And um, most, we like to think that most students can get through their MSc in two years, and many, many do. Um, however, we do recognize that a lot of our students also are doing this whilst caring for children or dependents and working at the same time. So, um, you know, there is definite flexibility and that actually allows people to um, take on this extra commitment and, and sort of, you know, partake in professional development uh, whilst they're at work. So um, hopefully it provides a really flexible and um, useful way of studying for, for a master's. Um, you take one module at each time. So that's another really um, sort of useful way of learning so that you can really focus on that particular topic. Um, and each session is um, around six months. Um, and each session also includes a dissertation study window. So if you are doing the MSc, you will do one module plus a dissertation in, in each session. And the reason for that is that as you're learning, um, you're developing your skills and you can start right from the beginning thinking about what your dissertation would, would be on and start sort of bringing in your studies and um, learning into, into that deeper element of study. And the dissertation will take place at the end of each session and throughout your, your dissertation, sorry, throughout your, your master's. So here's just a little um, graphic which helps you kind of see how the year, taken in as an example of um, a two year programme, you'll, you'll start with your subject module and your dissertation followed by your second and so on and so on. So there are um, short breaks in between um, around a week sometimes two, depending on where you are in the year. Um, and then you will start again with your elected uh, elective module once you've finished your call. So as, as uh, I explained, if you go onto the website, you'll see something like this. And this will help you sort of see what kind of modules that we have on offer in each of the programmes. Um, really the difference between the climate change uh, and development um, masters and the sustainable development masters is there, there are definitely some um, areas of crossover however the climate change really does focus on science of climate change and how climate change um, relates to different uh, areas of study for example urban environments um, as, as Tom mentioned um, but also looking at specifics like uh, adaptation resilience um, mitigation, financing, and that kind of thing. The sustainable development um, module starts with understanding sustainable development, and it takes uh, takes you through a kind of historical look at sustainable development. Where did we, where did we, where did it come from? How did we get to where we are today with the sustainable development goals? And then um, has a kind of critical look at uh, how sustainable development is um, measured, how we understand things like well-being and um, uh, equality, how we understand um, different uh, aspects of sustainable development relating to biodiversity and climate change, but also looking at perhaps alternative forms of sustainable development. So once you've done your core modules, you'll then be able to take some electives. Um, and some of these electives are offered um, by our development studies uh, department such as the politics of gender and feminisms in development and understanding violence, conflict and development. So you might find those to be interesting to you. Um, so, and we also have development studies students um, electing to take some of, our, some of our electives as well. So as you can see, the programme is structured with different electives available in different sessions. So it's important that you um, think about how you're going to plan your studies 
um, and make sure that you are, uh, you know, you're not sort of taking, you, you make sure that you're sort of thinking ahead, basically, for the next sort of couple of years, and then you can see how, how your studies will, will progress. But recognising, I should say, uh, that you, mm. I just spoke to one student who, um, said he completely changed his view on what his pathway might be. So you don't have to choose in the, the four in advance. You choose them just before the session starts when you register. So it may be that you thought you were going to choose one pathway and take these uh, modules, but actually as you're learning, your interest has been piqued by something. You're like, well, I really want to know more about um, food security and or your job changes or whatever it might be. So there's that flexibility to change that pathway. So it's good to have in mind what you might most interest you, um, but you can you can change your mind. Yeah, that's a good point. Thank you, Tom. Um, I think that's actually it. Uh, and we'd like to take some questions. If anybody has. So do feel free to drop any more questions into the chat box. Um, and then also, if you would like to raise your questions uh, via the audio, do feel free to um, stick the raise a hand um, and we'll happily invite you in to ask any questions that you might have. So I can see a few questions that have already been answered by Tom, so got any others? Maybe I could um, pose a question to the two of you, um, just in terms of um, the online um, programme. Uh, how do you find that um, current students um, interact with each other um, outside of the classroom environment? So do you find that a lot of the students set up um, different kind of channels to, to speak to each other um, outside of, of kind of the formal classes? Or how do you find that work? Well, I can speak from today's experience um, that there's a group, for example, in London that um, that meets up the students that are based in or near London. Um, but equally in other places around the world, we know we've had sets of students who want to just feel part of uh, something something bigger, um, whether it's visiting SOAS or, uh, or, or somewhere overseas. Um, there's also several channels on of WhatsApp groups for everyone who loves their WhatsApp groups, um, and they form kind of organically within, indiv within individual modules and um, when students want to work on something together and there's, there's one larger one also for, for the main for the, for the bigger group um it's useful for getting pointers but also within our modules themselves we split the students into groups of 15 for online um discussions so you have like a smaller core group that is because you know it gets too big or people get scared and to, um, they don't want to they don't feel, uh, you know, they get shy of posting or don't feel their contributions worthy. And by having smaller groups and building these, uh, building up confidence to, to post things and recognizing that everyone's experience and interpretations are, are, are interesting and different. So, yeah, we use the uh, kind of variety. Um, the LinkedIn group is quite active for, for the larger kind of finding who else works in your field um, and, and linking it with them. So it's a good question about um, choosing others. We've put the ones uh, from the development studies department that we know uh, we can rely on running um, as well uh, because it's within our, within our department. Um, we have offered in the past and will offer in the future um, electives from the Center for International Studies and Diplomacy, um, which run in particular the finance, climate change and sustainability module, which provides something that, that, that we currently don't in more in more depth. Um, but we haven't, we haven't, don't advertise that, so we don't disappoint people because it's not within our control whether whether and when that runs. So it's not run in a calendar way like our approaches. It's more um, on demand. I think well, the other thing to note is that there's lots of open events um, at SOAS um, that are held both in person and online. So um, the other thing to note is that whilst you're going through your program. Um, we, we do kind of uh, recommend to students that they do keep um, a lookout for kind of the one-off events that we do host, um, as I say, both online and in person. If you're able to come in person, then you're more than welcome 
as an online um, and distance learning student to, to come to our campus. Um, albeit obviously there might be some issues around kind of visas depending on where you're coming from. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of online um, one-off events as well that because we are, uh, operate quite an interdisciplinary approach at SOAS, um, you'll find that there's lots of crossover. So that's well worth bearing in mind as well. Absolutely. So we run a, we're currently running a, um, a seminar series in, with development studies and environment and development seminar series with our colleagues, wider colleagues in development studies, but that is being um, populated by, so the speakers come from all across SOAS. So they're from anthropology, they're from economics, they're from um, uh, politics, they're from arts, um, development studies, law, you know, we've got a lot of people working on climate change and we're trying to bring those in. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of, it's been quite nice actually the audiences for those have been students from across all different departments as well. And that's been another way of kind of forming that uh, interaction. Maybe we could um, talk a bit about um, access to um, academic staff um, when you're on an online distance learning program. So um, how can students contact staff whilst they're in the program at different times and obviously being located in different locations around the world? Okay, I'll take that one. Um, so each module has its own tutor and its own convener and students generally um, are in contact with the module tutor on a weekly basis. Um, so they are involved in those weekly discussions. And then of course we do have, because we're, we're conveners, we would generally, the conveners would generally run webinars to help with assessments, um, but also get involved in other things like seminars and things like that. So in terms of actual interaction, you've got the weekly interaction from your tutor, and then you've got more in intermittent interaction with your convener, who is likely to be more sort of support you with your assessments and um, things that are coming up that you know, need to sort of a little bit more help with. Um, but yes, I mean, we're all available via email. <laughs> <laughs> and, and through the and through the discussion page, we've also got a program area, um, and the program area is um, basically everybody in all the program in, in in all both programs doing all the modules. So that is where the kind of it's kind of like the the base, um, and we have discussion forum on that and announce announcements as well. So um, all the conveners, program directors, um, sort of converge. With students in that in that area and that's where they will get lots of information um, I, I think at the beginning just going through the learning how to do the VLE and Tom and I run webinars right at the beginning um, when students start with us and take students through the VLE we help explain how the structure is and um, also sort of navigating the VLE and where you can find information so we're always on hand we understand the international nature of distance learning, don't we? <laughs> so each of the modules has a, uh, a convener as well. So you have like a program convener, it's Annabelle or I, which would be your first point of call for any, you know, major admin issues in particular or academic, say admin issues, uh, academic issues and broad academic issues, things like um, advice on which modules you might want to take just to talk something through um, but each module has a convener academic convener as well so it's one of the members of staff of SEDEP who's your kind of port of call that's the person who will have written the curriculum um, and uh, you'll get to know because they'll be on the webinars um, and they'll be a, they're the point of, point of call for that as well and of course there's um, your dissertation supervisors so that as I said that's a mix of people from ex in internal experts and uh, external expertise. Um, but again, there's a, there's a convener for that dissertation process. Uh, our colleague, uh, Ros Taplin from within SEDEP, who um, can help steer you through that and provide advice and support. And we've also got our student support team and they help students with enrollments, registration, and, and also those questions, you know, I'm, I'm not able to hand in on time. I mean, you can go to your convener or student support or your tutor, um, but student support will help you with deferrals, will help you with any problems that you're having um, with, you know, handing in assessments, um, anything really. I mean, they're there 
all the time for you. Um, and of course, you know, we have the University of London and um, things like graduation and ceremonies and certificates and all those kinds of things. Um, so you also get a, a, a kind of pass into the University of London portal. And on that as well, there is also lots and lots of um, support in terms of writing, um, in, in terms of writing assignments, in terms of learning about academic issues such as plagiarism and how to, um, how to, how to you know, reference correctly. Um, and, and lots of study skills actually that are available through the University of London. So you'll get you'll get uh, access to two two kind of worlds. You'll have the SOAS world and you'll have the University of London world as well. Yeah, and I think that access to kind of support both within SOAS and also within the wider University of London group is, is kind of really crucial because um, if we look at kind of uh, the, the makeup of our online and distance learning. Um, students compared to, um, in some respects, our in-person students, though arguably SOAS has a very diverse student body uh, for in-person as well, um, because it is often people who are maybe um, out um, working um, in various different sectors for many, many years, or possibly um, just having spent a lot of time out of education. Um, I think that those kind of skill sets are really, really great for, for you to get that kind of um, support with. Um, and also just thinking very internationally, um, mm. how you might look at um, academic writing in one country might vary very differently uh, to how you look at academic writing in, a, in another country. So I think that that kind of support is really, really key for students. Yeah, definitely. And, and for all your assignments, I mean, as, as I mentioned earlier, we have got uh, formative assessments. And that means that students who, yes, quite rightly have maybe done, uh, you know, degrees in other countries with completely different sort of academic cultural, um, you know, uh, rules, regulations, and but also people who haven't written for a long time. And it really gives those people an opportunity to try stuff out and get, you know, dedicated feedback on their work so that they can understand how they, they can improve, because that's, that's what everybody wants to do, don't they? They just want to, you know, see what they can do and, and try, to, try to do it well and improve. And, and so tutors that are on our programmes, they, they give, you know, very, very good specific feedback for each and every assignment um, and, and also do lots of start signposting to study skills if they think that students or if students require more or ask for more, more support. So do feel free to drop in any other questions that you might have. Um, it could just be about particular, it could be about particular modules, it could be about the programme as a whole, um, and we'd be happy to answer them. Maybe I can just pose one more question out there is um, uh, about <coughs> kind of alumni and how um, our alumni are involved in our programmes kind of once they finished um, their studies with us. So, do we do events where we kind of um, invite alumni to come back um, and participate in, in current programs or participate in kind of webinars that we might be running more open webinars? I can ask that in terms of um, what we're starting with development, the Department of Development Studies now is to um, start working on seminar, a seminar series for careers that are based on our alumni network. So that is a really nice way of bringing people back in to talk about what's happened since their degree and to provide advice on, you know, so we've got one on Thursday, which is someone working in the financial sector, someone working for an, an activist oriented NGO, um, someone who's based in a, um, a UN agency and one more. <laughs> um, and they've all, they've all done um, environment related uh, development, environment and development related degrees in the department, department of development studies and so it's nice to hear from them how what the real world looks like and how it's different having studied at SARS and uh, that, that, that's something that the students have asked for in their feedback I should but well, we should have said the other way that you asked for how we have contact how students have contact with the academics but also they have contact with student representatives for each of the programs um, so they get to talk they get to speak regularly with us informally, but also formally through our academic committee. And so things like um, those requests for what would better, what would people more interested in um, are uh, 
sorry, I'm reading the thing. Uh, yeah, that was something that people were really keen to see um, on the career support wasn't, was to actually hear from people who've studied at SOAS and you know what, what that means for them. A uh, question was, are, it, uh, are, is it live? No, importantly, this is, um, our programs are asynchronous. They are done so that you can do them in your own time. So our pedagogy involves um, a mix of key readings, uh, extended readings, um, video, short video introductions that really introduce the topics rather than uh, being kind of comprehensive lectures. They are designed to be um, an introduction to the sorts of issues you need to understand in that week and pointers, pointers to what you might find and look for, especially in particular readings. And that's combined with a set of sets of exercises, which are more um, usually based on multimedia. So it may be um, read these read this report that's a policy focused report rather than academic um, or watch this video or read really listen to this podcast or um, do this online exercise. Um, and then that the results and experiences of that are then part of the discussion, the online discussion in the online forum. And they can be done, they can be posted and done at your own, in your own time. So it recognizes that people are in different places around the world. They're in different jobs, different uh, opportunities. Yeah, I mean, the time difference is, we try these webinars like this, you know, when we do live webinars, um, we've tried doing them three times <laughs> across a day for different time zones, but inevitably people are like, yeah, that's in my time zone, but I'm at work or, you know, it's really impossible. So, you know, it's nice to have a, a small audience, but we recognize that a lot of people um, do watch things back uh, on, on video and that's how it's designed. Yeah, I think we found even from um, just the last two years um, and even with students who are technically taking in-person classes that, that have moved online, that the on-demand um, aspect of it and being able to watch things um, back and watch things in their own time really, really works for students. And I think uh, moving forward, um, I mean, obviously, that's always the case with the online and distance learning, but I think moving forward, I think the kind of way that we look at education and the way that we look at delivery of programs will change, I think, with nearly every university, including much more kind of on demand um, kind of content and ability to watch things. And I even think today's session, we've had quite a few people register who will probably watch this session back uh, once we set the recordings um, out there. So uh, definitely, I think that really helps. And, and a lot of our students feedback that having that time to really kind of um, sit and, and kind of actively listen to something as opposed to thinking, okay, I've got this small window of time here, or, you know, it's not on my time zone. At the moment, I'm in Australia. So for me, this is very early in the morning. Um, and I can imagine that if you were having to concentrate on um, like a class, that would be particularly hard to do if you were trying to come in from different places. So yeah, I think it's, that, it's the best way to kind of run the program. I should say, actually, for all those people who are watching, after the event. If they do have any questions that they can contact, feel free to contact either Tom or myself and we'll be very happy to answer you. You can find our uh, email addresses online. I think Kim, you've muted yourself. Sorry. Um, so I think that brings us to the end of our session today. So um, thank you so much for attending. I hope we answered some of the questions that you might have. But as we say, um, all of our details are on the website if you would like to contact um, with any further questions about the programme. And we do welcome lots of questions, um, even about particular modules or about kind of the overall programme or even about SOAS in general. Uh, we understand that there are different things that bring students to us. Uh, different things that they've seen online, but really to kind of get that overarching um, understanding of a programme before you, you undertake it is really, really important. Um, so do feel free to reach out to us. Do feel free just to um, go onto the website and look at the open events that we run as well. Like we've mentioned here, there are lots of different seminar series that we're running, particularly um, increasingly online um, at the moment, and they might be really focal to um, the programme that you're thinking of doing, or they might be on the periphery of that, but just going to give you a little bit more um, exposure to different areas. Uh, and much like um, Tom, Thomas said, uh, you know, you can start off with one idea and kind of one focus, and then you can hear something, attend a lecture, um, have a meeting with an academic or even with another student who kind of talks about 
a different aspect that they've seen through the programme and it kind of ignites your interest. And I think that's something that SOAS really offers our students is that we are very interdisciplinary. Um, and though you can come out of your programme being you know, a real specialist in a particular area if you want to, there's also that opportunity to kind of widen um, your, your kind of knowledge um, and expertise. So you can kind of get out from the programme what you want. We have lots of students who join us who maybe have very specific knowledge in one area and are looking to kind of widen that. And then we have others who might have um, a, be from a completely different background, but looking to get into a new uh, career path or possibly um, in their own institution or organization that they work in, they're looking to expand and so they're able to kind of get that knowledge. So thank you again, everybody uh, for joining us. Um, so thank you again, yeah, everybody for joining us and I hope you found this session really helpful. Thanks a lot, Kim. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.